Hello, I'm Neil Dealey, co-founder and partner of Architects and Urban Planners Metropolitan Workshop. Welcome to Reshaped, a podcast series to mark our 15th year and to record perspectives on how the built environment is changing and needs to change in this historic moment. We ask leading thinkers and doers to respond to issues highlighted by the pandemic while we're in the throes of change and memories and perspectives are fresh. Has the door opened to a new era? We think so. The Irish public has shown that it's ahead of its politicians in its attitudes to solving social issues, argues our speaker in this episode, who is himself a politician. This is particularly so when it comes to issues around housing and public realm that the pandemic has highlighted, and especially in Dublin. Policies need to change to reflect what people want to see, and that includes more state provision of housing because the market isn't meeting rapidly growing need. Gary Gannon is Irish Social Democrat TD for Dublin Central constituency, and prior to that was a city councillor. So in Dublin, and possibly in Ireland as a whole, I think it's fair to say that the public have always been a little bit of head of their um, governors when it comes to, you know, telling them that things have changed. That was particularly pronounced when it came to our last two referendums, social referendums, the most recent being on access to abortion and before that on marriage equality. It was always being said that those were never really achievable because the public were, were a little bit more conservative. And that was always how the state operated on those terms. And then actually when we came to having a mature conversation, about the type of society we want to have and access to abortion provision and if a person can marry the person they love. I mean, it was it was, it was was a contentious debate, but what was demonstrated from it was that the public were very much ahead of the government and the state on those issues. And that's reflected again when it comes to things like our, our housing crisis. In Dublin at the minute, we have quite a substantial problem in regards to inability of people to access housing, either affordable housing or even just able to rent housing. And where our government still are very much is the idea that the market will solve the problem. So they hand it over, as they always have done, the private developers, where the public mood is very much in this concept that we need more public housing. People who can access public housing that's built from by the state, which they can potentially purchase from the state or even rent from the state. And you can clearly see that's kind of... Um, become an unavoidable argument over the last couple of years in particular in Dublin, where we just want access to public and affordable housing. There are some speckles of positivity when it comes to having more state involvement in housing in Dublin once again. And I should say a lot of the housing stock in Dublin that was built from the 1940s upwards was actually built by the the state. And that continued well up until the, the late 80s. Some of the big housing estates around Dublin were built by the state and over the course of decades they've kind of rolled back on that. But in terms of what's emerged recently, we're still seeing some a lot of attempts to sell off publicly owned land to private developers and those of us who would be on the left, who would believe in um, the state's involvement in housing, are being told that we need to, um, we can't have perfection or you can't let the perfect get in the way of the good and we need to get these houses built quickly. And I think there's even study after study that's been conducted by the state itself is demonstrating that land and public land is the most important commodity in the state's possession, but we're still even now trying to sell off public land to private developers to build in private public partnerships, but um, they're not really working. And I think there's a new wave emerging that's been led for by community activist groups and people on the ground that are simply telling us that that's no longer suited for purpose. And I think we've drew a line in the sand on that now, and I think it will escalate a change in mindset and hopefully 
bring about a scenario where once again the state gets back involved involved in building housing on a fairly mass scale. And we have, as I mentioned previously, we have that in our history. When the time when we are a lot poorer than we are now, the state built housing housing estates all across the country that are still standing even today so I mean we can do it when we put our mind to it I think we just have to um, get back to that collective way of thinking I think we're having a really interesting debate in Dublin I think it's one that's been replicated in some of the London boroughs also is actually what's the role of our city centre and most importantly how much space should be allocated over to the private car and more and more and quite, and quite quickly in fact I think a lot of us have come around to the mindset that actually private cars don't really belong in a city centre environment so when you stripped away what the pandemic revealed to us that when you take out um, a lot of the reasons why people might have to drive into the city centres. We'd actually found that we've had a lot more um, peaceful streets, a lot safer streets. We've seen restaurants who are no longer able to welcome people inside their doors, who were able to put um, tables and chairs on the outside. And we've got, a, really quickly, we've got sort of an outside dining culture developing in Dublin that we never had previously. And I mean, that's that's a combination of a couple of things. One, there was been no cars there. People felt safer. It's a little bit more serene. Um, even about how we move around the city. You know, I'm a cyclist and always have been. And during, when I was elected to Dublin City Council for the first time in 2014, there was just a, always seemed to be just this conflict between cyclists and drivers. And that continues... That continues today, even now. But also, but I think at this point, what's changed is the public mood has changed. I think people are realising that the level of respiratory diseases in city centres is disproportionately high in comparison to every to elsewhere. That's massively impacted by having cars and vehicles just constantly driving through small and narrow streets. And we're out asking the question, well, is this worth it? And more and more we're deciding that it isn't. So, I mean, the debate's still going on. We it is, it is we do still have to listen to communities who believe that they are going to be impacted more than others if we start to remove private cars from the road. But we can't unsee the benefits of the pandemic. We can't unsee the fact that having quieter streets created more peaceful communities. Having quieter streets where there wasn't cars, buses and trucks plowing through them meant that you could actually sit there and enjoy a cup of tea or a coffee and have a chat with your friends. And it just made it a little bit more peaceful. And also, also being able to get around your communities, be it on a bicycle or is and actually just a lot more pleasant way of engaging in a community. And it means that people who want to walk, if they're more elderly or people even who want to get a bus are not being clogged up in transport and people are just enjoying their streets a little bit more. So when it comes to the real kind of city centre communities, particularly in Dublin where I represent, we've found the benefits of just seeing our streets a little bit more tranquil. And actually, and now we're asking, well, why are we allocating so much of our road space to cars? Why are we allocating so much of our road space to cars when we give a tiny little proportion to the bicycle and we keep a tiny little path for walkers that is all clogged up? And again, they're the benefits that we've seen some benefits of the pandemic that simply won't be able to be unseen as we start to come back to some sense of normality. And I hope normality isn't the old way of doing things. So as we emerge from the pandemic, what we need to start to appreciate is just how comfortable our actual streets and our communities can be. But not only how comfortable they can be, how important they can be. You know, when everybody had to go inside and stay inside their houses, it was quite clear that the people most disproportionately impacted by that were the communities who had already been poorer previously. So people who lived in city centre communities, who lived in overcrowded accommodation, didn't have access to green spaces. And that's again where you see the pandemic flared and at its worst. So as we emerge from that, I think it's investment in our walking and cycling infrastructure, it's investment in green spaces in our communities, and it's also looking at the type of conditions that contributed to a worsen of the virus. So people living on top of each other in conditions that weren't sanitary and weren't safe. You know, in this new world where we're all linked or connected, you know, they're no longer, they were never suited for purpose, but they're no longer morally viable. So as we emerge, I think we have to commit ourselves to being better taking the lessons that we've learned, applying them to our streets and applying them to the manner in which we live or expect others to live more importantly. That was Gary Gannon. The Irish government needs to revive its role in providing housing of all types, Gary argues. The pandemic has exacerbated problems arising from the lack of the right homes and not just social housing. Yet for more than four decades, from the 1940s to the 1980s, the Irish government did provide the homes that people needed. Now Irish voters are calling for it to do that again. 
Covid has done much to sharpen that political imperative and it has become an unavoidable argument, he suggests. The pandemic also highlighted just how much of Dublin streets no longer need to be devoted to the car. A revelation, Gary says, that cannot be unseen. Now Dubliners have experienced the benefits. The public mood has changed and Gary hopes that we don't go back to our old habits and that policies on housing and public space need to become, as he eloquently argues, more morally viable. You can listen to other podcasts in the Reshape series at all the major providers or go to our website, metwork.co.uk. Series directed by Lee Mallett, produced by David Michon and Justina Green, recorded and edited by Sean Crook. <laughs>